Well, welcome back to the Reading and Writing Podcast. My guest today is Matthew Farrell, author of the new novel, Tell Me the Truth. Matthew, welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. Well, if someone hasn't heard about your new novel, Tell Me the Truth yet, how would you describe the novel? So Tell Me the Truth is the second book in my um, Susan Adler and Liam Dwyer series. Um, it's a police procedural with a little bit of a um, psychological thriller mixed in there. And in this particular um, book, Tell Me the Truth, um, Jenny Moore is an 18-year-old uh, high school graduate who's weeks away from going to start a kind of a whole new life for herself in college. And her mother discovers that she's been murdered in the backwoods behind her house. And when Susan and Liam come to investigate, uh, some of their preliminary findings uh, immediately point to a member of their family who they think uh, might have done so, uh, you know, murdered Jenny. And, um, you know, as the book progresses, there's, um, you know, there's different motives for different members of the family to keep the reader guessing. And then um, they come to their conclusion and find their killer. Well, do you remember the original idea or impetus that led you to writing Tell Me the Truth? Yeah. So with me, a lot of times uh, an idea for a book will start with just a singular scene in my head something that just kind of pops in there and I never know kind of why it's there or who the characters are or what's happening. So I kind of deconstruct the scene from there to build the book. So in this case, um, I, I pictured a woman sitting on the edge of her bed, kind of, um, you know, her nightgown spattered in blood and the husband asking her, you know, what happened? And she's kind of catatonic and not able to, um, to answer him and which, which leads me to all these kinds of questions as to, you know, who she is, what happens, why doesn't the husband know what happened? And that kind of, that was the seed that was planted that, uh, you know, grew in to tell me the truth. And I'm curious in terms of your writing process, once you have that kind of original scene, as you just described, do you do a lot of plotting or do you kind of write the scene and see where the narrative kind of goes in terms of your just kind of narrative sense. So I'll get the scene in my head and I will kind of run around with that and kind of figure out what's going on from there. Probably, probably for about six months in my mind. Um, and, and then by then I usually have kind of a beginning and an end. And once I've got the beginning, I'll sit down and I'll just kind of start writing it. Um, so I don't do much plotting, uh, which leads to a whole lot of, editing and rewrites on the back end, but that's kind of just my method. Um, and I would say, you know, nine times out of 10, the person who I think will be the killer by the time I get, get to the end of the book changes just kind of based on me learning more about my characters as I go and things that happen and, and develop and secrets that unfold that even I was unaware of, you know, prior to starting the book. Uh, so it's, it's, it's a thrill for me to write because I'm almost like a reader when I start out and I, and I kind of know where things are going, but I really don't have a, you know, a definitive path on to, to follow as I go. So it's exciting. Sure. So what was your initial writing journey that led you to writing and then getting your first novel published? So I was, I was writing for as long as I can remember. I would watch, um, you know, in my reading and scary movies are, are two really big things that I grew up with. Um, so, you know, it kind of came natural. I guess I was born with it. I, I, you know, I would at very early age, I would watch a scary movie and then I would go to the typewriter and kind of type my own version of that movie. Um, you know, and kind of make little books as I was younger, um, took it more seriously in high school. And when I, when I, uh, graduated high school, I decided that, uh, I was going to pursue some kind of a writing career, you know, it might not have been my you know, my primary career, but it was something that was in me and I was compelled to write and I loved to write and it was a way to escape for me. So, you know, while I went through my journey in life, you know, I was always writing. Um, I actually wrote the first draft of my debut novel, um, 20 years before it was published. 
And, you know, my, my publishing journey to that first novel was probably pro- kind of, you know, I would write something, send it out, get, you know, get a handful of rejections, take a break, get a new idea, start something. So over that time, I, I probably wrote about 10 manuscripts that never got published. But in doing so, you know, really found my voice as a writer, honed my craft, studied kind of, you know, what the thriller genre you know, was as it was, you know, growing it from the 20th to the 21st century. And, um, you know, got to the point where, you know, I was always going back to this debut novel because I liked the idea so much and um, ended up crafting it to uh, into a bestseller. So I was it took me 20 years to get there, but I made it. That's great. And what do you what do you think that you were um, kind of working out for yourself in terms of learning? Um, across those 10 manuscripts as you were, you know, as you said, I think it was about a 20 year period, uh, from the time that you wrote your, your first draft of your novel that ended up getting published. Just, you know, kind of the art of plotting, the art of pacing, the art of dialogue, you know, it's very hard. With equipment breakdown coverage from American Family Insurance, you can protect all the things that keep your dream home running from sudden mechanical or electrical issues. Because this sound shouldn't mean. Contact your local agent or visit AmFam.com to learn more. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Refer to policy for equipment breakdown covered losses, deductible limitations, and exclusions. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, SI, and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Products not available in every state. To bring, you know, a character to life on the page. Uh, there's nothing for the reader to visually look at. Um, there's got to be enough description in your prose to give them a picture in their mind of what's happening. Um, but not too much that it's overwhelming and, and slows the story down. So you kind of go through a trial and error period when you're, you're learning your craft and, you know, your dialogue might be unrealistic or sophomoric. Your pacing might be, you know, too fast or too slow for whatever kind of story you're trying to build. So for me, it was, you know, it was a lot of trial and error, kind of just working through all that, you know, all the while reading the genre I was writing in to kind of pick up on their pacing and plotting and characters and, and how that went. And, you know, the biggest change that I saw between, you know, the 20th and 21st century, which is why I keep mentioning it is, you mm-hmm. know, in the 80s and 90s, you could really take your time to develop a character, you know, maybe spend the first hundred pages and allow the reader to learn about all the different characters and their families or whatever the case may be. Um, and today we have such little time and, and such a small window of opportunity to get the reader's attention that... You really, it's hard to do that these days. These days, a reader, you know, and that's fine with me, but a reader wants to jump into the story, you know, learn enough about the characters where they're invested, but, you know, they want to get on with, you know, in my case, you know, the murder investigation and what clues are, are we finding and, you know, who are the suspects and why and, and really keep that pace up. And, and that's been the biggest adjustment that I've had to make from the 80s and 90s into the 2000s and, you know, and, and beyond was uh, just kind of matching the pace of my books to the kind of the, the time that the reader allows me to give them, uh, to get into one of my stories. Sure. So are you working on a new novel now? So tell me the truth is novel number four, which comes out on the 22nd. Uh, we are novel number five is done. It's a standalone. Um, and my agent is, uh, you know, reviewing that with publishers as we speak. That's great. Well, what writing advice would you offer for those who are working on their own stories and novels? I think the, uh, the piece of advice that I would offer, um, two things I would say, you know, if you, if you really feel like writing is in you and it's part of you. And you're compelled to write. And even if you get frustrated and want to stop and you can't stop, um, be patient, keep knocking on that door and uh, don't give up. I mean, it took me 20 years to get my first novel published. And, you know, as frustrating as it was during that time, I really wouldn't change a thing. I mean, I learned a lot during those two decades and the novel that the reader ended up um, holding in their hands was, was worth all of those years of 
blood, sweat, and tears in trying to get into the publishing industry. So first off, if, if it's in you, do not give up and just keep, keep learning, keep writing, keep pushing. And then the second piece of advice uh, I would give is, you know, continue to read in your genre. Um, because, you know, like I said, readers' tastes change their ability to sit down with a book for certain periods of time change, you know, back in the day, it might've been, you know, been able to sit for two hours. Uh, and nowadays, you know, maybe you only have a 20 minute train ride, you know, to catch a couple of chapters. So keep reading in your genre, don't give up. And that would probably be my number, my two most, um, you know, greatest pieces of advice that I could give. Sure. I'm curious, what kept you going during those years of writing and, and trying to figure out how to craft a novel? I wish I could tell you. I mean, that, that's kind of <laughs> how I know I was born to write uh, because I w- I'm, to this day, I'm just compelled to write. I can't explain it. I've tried to quit. I had a very successful uh, banking career as I got older. There was no need for me to continue to try to write. I was raising a family, um, you know, two young girls that needed their dad around and not, you know, parked in the, in the basement, typing out a novel that may or may not ever be published. And, um, you know, a couple of times I tried to stop and, um, you know, just told myself, you know, you gave it a good run. It didn't happen. That's okay. You know, let's just move on with the rest of your life. And that, you know, that time off might last, you know, six months, I think was the longest. And then I'd get a new idea that popped into my head or a new scene that popped into my head. And I would just literally be compelled to write. And, um, you know, I, I so I, I couldn't stop um, if I tried. If I never got published back in 2016, I think I would uh, still be writing to this day, trying to trying to get published. So it's just in me. So it's, that's all I can say. <laughs> well, what novels or nonfiction books have you read recently that you enjoyed? Uh, novels that I have um read recently that I enjoyed very much were, um, silent patient, uh, was excellent. Uh, blacktop wasteland was also very, very good. Well, where can people find you online if they'd like to learn more about you and your books? Well, my website is mfarrellwriter.com. Uh, my Twitter is mfarrellwriter. My Facebook is Matthew Farrell Books. And on Amazon, you know, under Matthew Farrell, they have their own author page for me there as well. Great. Well, again, we've been speaking with Matthew Farrell, author of the new novel, Tell Me the Truth. The book is on sale now, so go buy a copy. And Matthew, thanks for doing this interview. Uh, Thank you so much. I enjoyed it. With equipment breakdown coverage from American Family Insurance, you can protect all the things that keep your dream home running from sudden mechanical or electrical issues. Because this sound shouldn't mean. Contact your local agent or visit AmFam.com to learn more. American Family Insurance. Insure carefully. Dream fearlessly. Refer to policy for equipment breakdown covered losses, deductible limitations, and exclusions. American Family Mutual Insurance Company, S.I. and its operating company, 6000 American Parkway, Madison, Wisconsin. Products not available in every state.